Hi, my name's um, Danny Angus. I'm a resident mental health nurse by background, and I'm team leader of the Positive Intervention Programme within Ashway of Hospital. So this presentation will focus upon how a dedicated team of staff have worked with hard-to-reach challenging patients who are nursed in seclusion and long-term segregation. So the aims of today's session. I've given a brief outline of relevant literature linked to seclusion and problems of long-term segregation. I'll give you an insight into the positive intervention programme. I'll be, discuss I'll be discussing what are the benefits of exercise and improved access to healthcare, how we've improved access, and some concluding comments. So, there are a small group of patients within high secure services who are chronically challenging and demonstrate the propensity for extreme violence. Often have severe and enduring mental health, namely paranoid schizophrenia, and are treated with antipsychotic medication. I thought it would be useful to give you a definition of seclusion, which is the supervised confinement of a patient in a room which may be locked to protect others from significant harm. Its sole aim is to contain severely disturbed behaviour which is likely to cause harm to others. Yet there's little agreement on or evidence for the utility and benefits of seclusion, but we still use it. So practice may be influenced by a number of factors, history and culture, locally and nationally, I think more importantly, the perception of risk. Now this is crucial because within the institution, practice varies a lot because of staff beliefs and perception of risk. Something important to consider is the seclusion cycle, which is the idea that seclusion actually worsens a number of pre-existing difficulties and can create social skills of deprivation, a lack of cognitive and psychological stimulation. And problems include reduced insights and social tolerance, increased psychological and resistance to treatment, exacerbation of negative symptoms of psychosis, patient internalisation for the need of seclusion, and the systematic dependence on seclusion to contain risk. So what we know is that long-term social isolation can impact upon emotional, cognitive and psychological functioning. It's well researched to have a number of negative harmful effects upon the individual. It can maintain social withdrawal. It acts, uh, um, exacerbates impulse control. Maintenance of symptoms and aggression. And reduced opportunity to engage in physical um, activity, leading to poor physical health and reduced self-esteem. So I'll highlight what seclusion is, why we use it, but also problems with using seclusion. Seclusion has become a well-used option in high secure services for, for managing violence and aggression. And there's a recognition that we need to reduce figures. So the positive intervention programme was developed out of a need to re-socialise this patient group. Fundum was secured from the hospital and it consists of a multidisciplinary team with medical, psychology and nursing leads. We're integrated within individual patient care teams and we provide a systematic and coordinated plan of programmes with monitoring and live feedback process. And we're also part of an overall patient treatment programme that includes pharmacological, psychological and psychosocial components. So the aims of the positive intervention programme. We aim to intervene at a systems level, model and work with secluded patients to shift and challenge perceptions of risk. Because within high secure services, we do have a tendency in creating you know, mythological monsters. And to provide train and force staff to improve skills in managing violence and aggression. We also aim to intervene at a patient level to lessen the potential effects of seclusion, provide purposeful activity, increase adherence to the milieu through engagement and promote termination of seclusion, to promote social skills and social boundaries, provide pro-social modelling and improve quality of life, and to provide access to physical health care and exercise. So, the Positive Intervention Programme aims to have a number of benefits for patients, but today we're focusing upon how we've increased their access to physical health care and exercise. There's national policy, the white paper, choosing health, this provides guidance and expectations on improving access to physical health care for people with severe mental illness, with an emphasis being on 
individual health checks because people with mental health are more likely to die prematurely. What we know is that severe mental illness is treated with atypical antipsychotic medication which increases the risk of increased appetite, weight gain, cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Obesity is a problem within the hospital and the psychological therapies and psychoeducational programs to assist in addressing obesity. And psychiatric nurses are taking first steps in incorporating exercise into their daily routine, but a long journey remains. There are recorded benefits in psychiatric populations, but there is evidence to suggest that it's still a neglected intervention. The benefits are improved mental health and well-being, reduction in depression and anxiety, enhanced cognitive f functioning, improvements in symptoms including mood, sleep patterns, psychosis and alertness, better social skills and empowerment, and meaningful activity and the use of time. I have a couple of qualitative statements taken from interviews with patients on how exercise has benefited them. I know it's only exercise, but to me, it's something that keeps me going. When I play football, I don't think about being here. So in reality, what does the Positive Intervention Programme do? We provide a structured programme which consists of the following areas. Developing a, a therapeutic relationship with the patient. This can be done via a segregation hatch to overcome staff fears and anxieties, engage clinical staff to break barriers, to provide easily achievable goals to promote motivation, to provide support, reflect the practice and supervision for all staff. We work at the patient's own pace, close liaison with the clinical team, debriefing following each session where the dedicated team is involved in the intervention. We develop a reformulation of risk following each session and we develop protective strategies with the patient to lessen social anxieties. We have a number of patients within Ashworth Hospital who find it difficult to verbalise when they're feeling unwell. So we use the likes of low stimulus areas within like the health and fitness departments, or we use clear foot affairs on the ward. So if patients up out of segregation engaging in some physical activity on the ward and they feel unwell or they have urges to assault, then they have a clear foot affair to go back to the room. We provide pro-social modelling through team activity and non-contact sports. We currently have 13 patients on the programme and the patients have access to a wide range of rehabilitation areas where they can part participate in a number of exercises. And we provide access to physical healthcare facilities and health promotion advice. So our progress to date, we've been running since May 2008 and we facilitated over 3,751 sessions, providing patients who are nursed in seclusion and long-term segregation access to healthcare and exercise. Out of those 3,751 sessions, there has only been 12 incidents of violence recorded. Our capacity is to deliver 39 sessions per week, and we've collaboratively, successfully terminated 36 long-term segregation patients to seclusion and reintegrate them into the war communities. We've developed a training package and delivered across high secure services and we've created war-based links to improve collaborative work and practice. And we continue to jointly work with healthcare and psychological treatment and recreational areas to improve their access. So some final thoughts. There are a small number of challenging and highly disturbed patients within high secure services who are the most marginalised and stigmatised patients. The Positive Intervention Programme was designed just under five years ago to combat the negative effects of seclusion through decompression. Utilising you know, methods of pro-social modelling and a highly skilled, coordinated team, it's been possible to engage and reassociate patients through improved access to physical health care and exercise. 
providing patients with opportunities to establish professional attachment, promote social skills awareness, insight and social tolerance, ultimately leading to compliance with pharmacological, physiological and psychological treatments. We're currently in the process also of researching the efficacy of different elements of the programme. So why does this really work? The team consists of dedicated, enthusiastic and passionate clinicians who are driven to improve the quality of life of long-term segregated patients with the ultimate goal of terminating seclusion. So the positive intervention programme have had to overcome a number of challenges and obstacles whilst working with this difficult patient group. And our motto is, yes, you can be a dreamer and a doer too if you remove one word from your vocabulary. Impossible. It's the team. <laughs>